Welcome back to the morning, Glenn. Do you have to go number two or number one? Neither right now. I, I know that question makes me sound like I'm asking a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> but bathroom business isn't easy to talk about, but it is important. So today, why going number two should be priority one. Maria Vial is a certified holistic health practitioner and nutritionist. She's here with more on this big health concern and hopefully a little nervous to chat with us. Not, not very nervous. Good. This is okay. a very comfortable topic for me. This is, this is a huge part of what I do. So. Well, and I think that's good to know because people, when they come into you and talk about their health and nutrition, this is something that's important to be able to talk about, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. It doesn't matter what the situation is. If you're coming to me for weight, if you're coming to me for chronic disease, if you're coming to me with digestive issues or sleep, mm -hmm. it is... It, it's something that impacts every single aspect of your health. Mm -hmm. Do you find that most people are uncomfortable talking about it? Because you have to ask questions. You yeah. want to know how regular are you? Well, and you have to be careful. And then what you, you say. get into like well, color how, and yeah. consistency. Well, like, and how often do you go to the bathroom? And you know they'll be, they'll usually talk thinking I'm talking about like number one urinating. Mm -hmm. I'm like nope. We're talking about bowel movements, and there's a little bit of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to discuss that. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny because yeah. everybody does get so nervous about talking. Why is it such a big health concern with our diets today? Well, it's one of those things that if you think about when you're a mom and you have a baby, like making sure that they have regular bowel movement, mm -hmm. and they usually have it every time that they eat, is really important because they're eliminating waste. So as we get older, certain things impact it, and if we're not eliminating waste and toxins that build up in our colon, it can, it can become impacted and inflamed, and it can be things that downstream are can attribute to so many of these chronic mm. health issues that we see. How many times, so just on a basic then, how many times a day should you be going number two or number one? At least once a day. Okay. One to three times. So again, you have to look at the other side of the spectrum. Going too much is also can be somewhat of a concern. Mm -hmm. On average, though, most people aren't going enough. So at least one time a day, preferably in the morning, a few hours before waking up. Okay. Well, and I think you make this point well, because you'll talk to doctors or read different things. Mm -hmm. And, and I, it, it seems after talking to you that the amount of times that a person should be going to the bathroom, pooping every day is underestimated. It is, and it's not something that you're usually going to be talking to your, your, like a regular checkup. It doesn't mm -hmm. get asked, but this is something where if you're not pooping, something is going on inside. Like there, you're holding on to toxins. You're going to have inflammation, things like IBS, colitis, diverticulitis, those digestive issues, but also things like rheumatoid, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. inflammatory diseases, and there's even links to constipation and the higher risk of things like breast cancer and colon cancer. So it's something to be mindful about. Okay, so before we get into how to make your diet regular again, what are some causes of constipation? So travel, medication, sleep, pregnancy, hormones, um, Anti-inflammatories like you know ibuprofen, Tylenol, taking a lot of those, all of those can mm. impact. So it's a matter of looking at all of those areas. You know, we look a lot, we talk a lot about food here, but all those lifestyle things can contribute to your regularity. All okay. right, well, let's get people more regular and start mm -hmm. with diet because this is obviously uh, something you know a whole lot about. And I think it is good to start with foods that you should add to your diet. And I think a lot of, there's a lot of misinformation about just adding fiber to mm -hmm. your diet, which sometimes can create as many problems as it solves. Absolutely. And we'll talk a little bit more about fiber supplements and why you should really try to get your fiber from food. Okay. okay. Um, but you really want to look, there's soluble and insoluble fiber in foods. And so you want to get a good mix of both. And so Berries are a really great source of this, plus they're low glycemic for your blood mm. sugar. Apples have a lot of pectin and actually malic acid. Does it matter if they're green or red? No, or, okay. it doesn't matter color um, of the apple. Mm -hmm. um, and things like your vegetables, so beets, greens, spinach, celery, you know, a lot of those leafy things. Sweet potatoes, avocados actually have a lot of fiber. Beans and lentils, these are really great too. Again, some people might have a little bit more sensitive digestion and have trouble with that. So mm -hmm. make sure that they're, they're cooked really well and they're mm -hmm. cooked down and you, you maybe add some spices to it. And you know, the old, the old fashioned go-to prunes. prunes. Yeah. But any, really any dried fruit can help with that. Question for you. I, I love beets. I just uh, started eating them like a, a couple years ago, but I have a lot of trouble just in my, in my stomach more mm -hmm. or less. It literally feels like I'm getting knives. And someone said, well, it's because it's so high in fiber. 
are beet some so a lot of people I think stay away from them because they do get that kind of gut ache. Mm -hmm. Can you introduce it in smaller portions or is that a sensitivity or an actual issue with beets? Well, it wouldn't be probably an issue with beets. You're sometimes with fiber you need to slowly build up. If yeah. you don't have a lot of fiber in your diet and you add all this in, you're gonna be like, oh my god, it's right. gonna be a lot on your stomach. So adding in at least some of these and the big thing too is chewing your food. So you're breaking it down in your mouth before it gets to your stomach. Also, roasting or steaming beets versus raw can mm -hmm. usually help with that breakdown of digestion. Okay. Okay. So those are all good foods to add. Mm -hmm. In terms of amounts, do you get into that? Or? I will say people don't eat enough fiber. Mm -hmm. They truly don't. And unfortunately, a lot of times when people have digestive issues, they tell you to stay away from fiber. Yeah. But you, fiber is really, it's so healthy, not just for helping with elimination, but it actually pulls toxins and binds it together in your bowel movements mm -hmm. to help eliminate it. That so was it, a good it, eye contact with yes. the camera right mm -hmm. there when you said I just want to make sure everyone's very comfortable with bowel movements. <laughs> Okay, these are foods to... We're running out of time. I feel like we have so much to say. These are okay. foods to limit. Yes. Not avoid, but limit. Yes, so if you're not having a regular bowel movement, I'm going to say first and foremost, if you're relying on your coffee or your cold caffeine to give you that morning bowel movement, it may seem like it's helping, but it's actually making it worse I was going to say, end. this is like breakfast for it a lot of people. It dehydrates your colon. So it's going to mm. stimulate your colon to create one, but it's going to dehydrate it and make it worse in the end. So you want to uh. either cut down or decrease or wait till after you have breakfast to have your coffee. Huh. Um, you know, refined no. white grains, cheese, nuts, bananas, all of these will actually contribute to constipation. They're not all bad, but if you do eat a lot of these and you're not going to the bathroom every day, mm. you kind of need to check it. What are these guys for? Now, these are things that a lot of people take fiber supplements, and I say, you know, if possible, please don't because they do dehydrate. They sometimes are too rough on your colon and oh. they can scratch. They also deplete your minerals and they can be really rough to take. Applesauce? Unsweetened applesauce with two tablespoons of ground flaxseed. And oh. have that with your dinner. That's a nice natural source of soluble, insoluble fiber. You have omega 3s that help mm -hmm. with inflammation without having to take, you know, some chalky, un, unflavorful yeah. Um, yeah. thing. Something yucky. In the morning, w water with lemon, water, 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 day long, all the time. If you're not going to the bathroom, you're probably not drinking enough water. But first thing in the morning, warm water with half of a lemon can really help stimulate a natural movement. Quick okay. about supplements, um, mm -hmm. because we gotta talk about exercise is good and, and getting enough sleep mm -hmm. is also vital. Um, but what do you wanna say about supplements? Supplements, so I've the one supplement that can really help is vitamin C, really mm -hmm. basic. So a thousand okay. milligrams a day. Also either eating probiotic foods, like sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, those things can help. Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt, or taking a multi-strain probiotic. You know, okay. I'm not a big fan of these like adding in these la like laxatives yeah. or those things may work at first, but they're not getting to the root problem okay. of your lack of bowel movement. Exercise, you say 15 to 30 minute walk a day, mm -hmm. even will just kind of help stimulate sleep, going to bed by 11 o'clock, and you can find out more or meet with Maria by going to her website. It's mariavile.com, so you can get back to food with Maria. Thanks so much, Maria. It's good stuff. Bowel yeah. movements. Thanks Ooh. for the plain talk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs>